WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is just hours away from being a free man, ending his nearly 14-year legal saga. Assange will appear in court in the Northern Mariana Islands to plead guilty for his role in one of the largest U.S. government information breaches in history. Assange has spent the past five years in a British prison. The U.S. Justice Department will allow time served and he is expected to return to his native Australia. WikiLeaks posted a picture of Assange just before layover in Thailand. He had faced 175 years in prison for leaking a trove of confidential U.S. military documents. Now, a federal judge must still approve the agreement. For analysis on this legal drama, we turn to Bruce Fine. He is a lawyer specializing in constitutional, international, civil rights and government regulatory law. Welcome back to the program, Bruce. Thank you for inviting me. Always. So, as we've said, this is the latest chapter, maybe not the final one, but in this saga that dates back over a decade, you know, Julian Assange has faced what? Warrants, threats of extradition, convictions, finally arrest, imprisonment. Uh, Bruce, why now, do you think? What would have it taken for both sides to come to this point? Well, the leverage on Mr. Assange was that uh, he was approaching extradition to the United States uh, for trial in which, as you pointed out, the potential punishment was far more severe than basically time served and being able to live in freedom. He also was suffering from deteriorating health. Uh, and on the United States side, uh, in my view, uh, these kinds of cases are always challenging because in order to prove uh, the elements of the offense, you have to skate around classified information and perhaps disclose the classified information, which the United States is reluctant to do. Um, I also think that um, the United States still is concerned that the United States Supreme Court could hold the application of the espionage to these circumstances violates freedom of the press or free speech. In particular, in this case, as in others, uh, the United States has never been able to allege or suggest what actual national security harm flowed from the disclosure of the classified information. Hmm. We all know in the United States, especially in Washington, uh, leaks and classified information appear regularly, and the United States still stands. It's very, very difficult to identify anything adverse in particular that's happened. Uh, going far back as the Pentagon Papers case when 47 volumes of classified information was released and no one's ever been able to say it had any impact on the Vietnam War. So I think the United States does not want and did not want to confront the possibility of the Espionage Act, at least in certain applications, could be held unconstitutional. So you think that is the motivation uh, for the U.S. government? Because, you know, this has been such a huge international case and the U.S. has been pursuing Assange's extradition to stand trial on U.S. soil for over a decade now. So it's just these factors that it is such a challenging case, do you think, that they finally agreed to a plea deal? That's right. I think they saw risks on their side. Uh, Julian Assange found risks on his, um, as well as the opportunity to be free. You know, he doesn't have... Uh, he's, he's, he wasn't prospering in prison um, by having time served and he can return to Australia. I do think it leaves uh, Espionage Act cases and the First Amendment in still a fog, if you will. Uh, I still think that if you take the precedent that was sought to be established in the Julian Assange case, it would threaten many, many newspapers and writers like Bob Woodward, who publish classified information all the time, as a matter of practice. The United States has never attempted to criminally prosecute journalists in the past, including the Washington Post and New York Times after the Pentagon Papers. Uh, and I think they would resist fiercely. Uh, but whether or not they could successfully accomplish something like that, and you could imagine if Mr. Trump is elected in November, I don't think he'd have any scruples about trying to prosecute the New York Times mm. or the Washington Post. Uh, he's not a fan of newspapers, for sure. Um, and then we could have then another constitutional 
uh, confrontation like the one that occurred in the Pentagon Papers case. Bruce, we have just about 30 seconds left, but I have to ask, you know, uh, Julian Assange is set to appear uh, in front of court in just under four hours. Once he is a free man, do you think this will be the last we hear of Julian Assange? Well, I don't know the details of his, um, uh, of his health, but I do think in terms of aspirations, I don't, I think it's at least uh, probable that he would attempt you know, give us his freedom to use a platform, uh, perhaps to go make uh, an effort to refine and adjust the law uh, so that it would not apply to his circumstances in the future uh, with greater clarity. Um, he is not somebody who's got recessive genes in him. He's not self-effacing. So I think he will continue to use his platform, but from Australia, uh, to try to make the press freer. He obviously is someone who's very skeptical of government uh, and is a voice in favor of transparency, however obtained. Bruce Fine, we'll have to leave you there. Thank you so much, as always, for your insight.